Brain Candy Brainiacs, episode 676. Hello, Sarah. I love that number. And I love that we are kicking off this year, well, a little bit after the new year, Mm -hmm. in our new studios that are looking so good. Yes. I I feel like a professional. I cannot stop checking out Susie's background. Like, I know. We look incredible. If you so good in HD. are not watching this on Patreon, well, frankly, I feel sorry for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, we things are cooking. I, I feel like we're going to be TikTok sensations. Definitely. Once we start uploading clips like the cool kids do. A, who are you, Susie? <laughs> Gen Z. Mm, I'm going to have to just accept that TikTok is just a part of life. Yeah. And stop protesting it tick tock tick tock susie time to get on there it's just a subset of the tick tock users that i hate it's not all of right TikTok. Well, this is like just how we feel about like humans in general right mm-hmm. there's usually a, a group of them we're like Ugh. yeah Ugh, but it's pizza. worse it's worse than even facebook i would say in terms <gasps> of like the annoying Bold. users <laughs> Bold. Mm. I know. Because what's going to happen when, mm-hmm. mo- well, some moms have discovered TikTok, but what's going to happen when, like, regular people's moms discover TikTok? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, like the old boomers or whatever? Yeah. Like, it's one thing if, you know, like, like. Oh, God. That uh, is I don't know. Scary. I feel like the women, like, Brunch with Babs, I mm-hmm. follow her. You know what, She's Sarah? Like, I had to unfollow her. Oh, <gasps> really? I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I need a little bit of that in my life. I need, I need that. Like, <laughs> what that do you kind need of, about it? Life I hacks? need that, that level of, of homemaker. Oh God. What put me over the edge was she did this one video where for coming up on Thanksgiving where she won, you know, like where you pull the garbage bag out of the garbage and it suctions and it's hard to get out, you know, yeah. when you're um, taking the garbage out. And she starts drilling holes in the bottom of a garbage can. I'm like, lady, that <laughs> that completely ignores the fact that sometimes the bags leak. And right. then that drippy, drippy, goop is going to be falling oh. out of your... Come on. You're making another on, problem bags. and solving w- one. What if you plugged it? <laughs> then that would create suction. You're correct. And then you... Have, yeah. I'm like, there, Babs. There's some holes in her... <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, this thing doesn't screw on, Babs, okay? My noggin says, what you're doing is trouble. Yeah. And I was well, like, I'll I'm done. Her. All right, well, I'm happy that she brings you joy. Yeah, she's like the kind of, like, that's a mom I'll follow on TikTok. But, like. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. At mm. least she's useful. Yeah. Yeah, when all the other boomers get on there, pff, we're doomed. I don't know what's going to happen. Doomed. Yeah. Um, I don't think I told you I uh, made a choice. Well, I told you, but I don't think I've told our listeners that I made the choice of my theme for 2023 yes. is adventure. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel have like it needs to, like a horn behind it. It was it had to happen, okay, you guys, because I have been in my bunker a little bit too long. Uh huh. And I just need what to push myself here. <sighs> well, just that I am not easing up on my COVID like hyper awareness, which mm-hmm, is a good mm-hmm, thing in a way, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm it's being just cautious. Awareness, maybe. Okay, yeah. But like all these people are like going to Europe and like doing stuff. I'm like, wow, don't they know about COVID? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they do. They're over it. And, you know, I think there's a healthy balance that needs to happen yeah. here. Do you have any ideas for what adventures you want to go on first or like what you're going to like dip your toe in? And like, Well, I, w- I d- would like to travel a little. Okay. I mean, it's been so long, man. Yes. But, What's on the list? Oh, uh, well, we want to go to Europe. My son is yes. super into World War II, so he wants to like go visit all the places where shit happened. I don't know. <laughs> like, okay. And he starts naming all these places. Wow. And, um, hey, anything to get him excited about history. Yeah. I mean, he's super into it, but I, we'll probably do that and visit Adam's family and all that. That'll be oh, fun. yeah. What about you? You chose rest. Is that still what you're landing on for your year? Because I was saying how those are in conflict, adventure, and they are. rest. They are. 
Although yeah, I, my I, motto is rest is best. Rest is best. You know, we talked about like the different kinds of rest that there there are. There's like social rest and yeah. What are rest. you going for? And and I, I we'll see whichever maybe I need during that. Do you feel tired? Time. Uh, I don't feel <laughs> tired as much as I feel. I was going to say worn out, but that's the same thing. <laughs> You're um, drained. Like you feel drained, just like, like depleted, drained. burnt out. Yeah. And it's more like that. And I, I, I think that, you know, you and I had a conversation a while back where we talked about things that we just need to kind of accept that like, I, I think that certain things are just always going to be hard for me. And I just have to accept that. What are they? And so like struggles with routine. Oh, right. Cause you were saying you need to accept like you have ADHD and yeah. like that it's makes like your brain different. Like that's yeah. just going to be a thing. So I think in it, it's, it's rest. And the other word that came to mind was acceptance mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, I think in accepting what my own limitations are, and maybe not even calling them limitations, I maybe that's the wrong word, but just like what skills I do have and what skills maybe I don't have. Yeah, your uh, strengths and in, in areas of opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> it gives me, it makes it so I'm not like spinning my wheels in, in areas that maybe I don't need to. I can just accept like, it's amazing how much easier it is to go with the flow and just like feel like you're in the flow with the energy of the universe Mm -hmm. when you just kind of aren't resisting. That's hello. That's what you taught us about when you get stuck in a fucking, what do they call that in the ocean? You're stuck in the- Oh yeah, like a rip current. Yeah. You got to just go with the flow, man. Yeah. You can't (laughs) swim against it. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's exhausting. Yeah. And so it kind of feels like that, that I'm like swimming up stream or like against the current sometimes and fighting these things of like, don't worry. It's fine. Yeah. A lot of it comes like with, I'm like exhausted from like beating myself up or having unrealistic expectations when really I just, and, and that takes away from recognizing the things I'm doing well. Mm Hmm. Oh, this got deep and I didn't. I mean, well, it's the serenity prayer. Like you can't control other people. You can't control lots of stuff and you got to accept that shit. Mm Hmm. Mm Hmm. Yep. That's so that is, hard, though. That last part of the serenity prayer, where you, the wisdom to know the difference, that's a toughie, too. Yeah. I'm telling you, one of the, one of the best tools that, that I ever learned in grad school, I use this with my clients, I've used this with myself, is you get two jars. And on one jar, you write things I can't control. Mm-hmm. And on the other jar, you write things I can't control. And you have to actually get the jar and do it. It's something about seeing it visually with your brain that, that mm-hmm. that's like the therapy magic. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And you put get a little post-it note thing and you put it right next to the jars. And when you have one of those worries, you think, which jar does this go in? Mm-hmm. And you write it down and you put it in that jar. Mm-hmm. And you're like, wow, there is so much I'm worried. And because the jar kind of represents your mind and how much space these thoughts take up in your mind. And s- these thoughts take up so much space. And you realize when you see them in the jar, you can't do anything. Why am I... Why am I worrying like why is this creating worry which creates like anxiety for no like stuff i don't even need to worry about i'll tell you though the human brain is so mysterious and fascinating to me and like everybody makes the same errors and stuff and part of what you know how i love old gossip part of what is fascinating is because you know, like I already said to you before, how I love that the story is complete. Like most of these people are dead. Yes. I, the ending is is there, and so then it it makes it so interesting to see like the things they talked about during their life, and then knowing how it ended. So many of them died from um, smoking stuff, you know, because oh, yeah. people smoked a lot more back then. Yeah, and whenever they talk about smoking, it just rings so like ominous to me because I'm like, uh, you wouldn't Ooh, quantum leap and go yes. back and be like, don't do it. But interesting. What I find so funny is that we all have something that's like smoking that we know mm-hmm. we shouldn't do or yeah. that we should change about our behavior, but we yeah. like fucking don't. <laughs> what? It's, it, it's we, so annoying how we do it's that. It's so annoying because it's a habit. 
Mm-hmm. And and we the, like it. Cr- we love it. That's the <laughs> craziest thing. It is so hard to wrap my mind. Anybody, like for anybody, just like gra- grasp that concept that our brain can habitually enjoy Mm -hmm. something that our conscious selves hate and do not want to do. Yeah. What? And we keep doing it to ourselves. What? We are stuck on that. So, so yeah, a little more of accepting those things (laughs) where I'm like, this is just how it is. Yeah. It really helped when I did that with food Mm -hmm. and my relationship with like what I was eating when I stopped. And this was so much from what I learned in doing this show with you, where we talked about you, we read a book that talked about, you read a book and then summarized it to me in our book club, which makes me feel like I read it. So yeah. why do I say, I, why do I do that? I'm like, we, we read a book, <laughs> Susie and our, some people in the book club read this book. It was one where it talked about, um, like words that we use around, Oh, that's like naughty food or yeah. that's sinful or that's like bad. Ba- no, mm-hmm. that's food. And like what, changing yeah the language that. around and, stuff and, yeah mm-hmm. and just kind of accepting like look sometimes i'm gonna be like this and sometimes i'm gonna be like this and sometimes and i know in the same way we never like unlearn things you know you may choose not like we we all know we should return the grocery cart mm-hmm. that's the right thing to do but there are times where we do it and times when we don't mm-hmm. Once you understand why maybe you should return the grocery cart, why you should do something, why you have the awareness of like, oh, if I eat these foods or if I like uh, uh, don't work out, don't move my body, then I'm going to feel this way. If I eat these these foods, then I'm going to feel this way. Once you have that awareness, that doesn't ever go away. You know, in the same way you can like not return your shopping cart. I can choose to not listen to that in my mind, that awareness. Yeah. But it doesn't ever go away. So I think like just accepting that like, okay, well, I know what to do. And, and there's sometimes where I'm going to do the thing, the, the things that make me maybe feel better. And then sometimes I'm like, I'm going to eat so many freaking cookies and that is okay. But just accepting that and not calling anything good or bad yeah. helped so, so, so much mm-hmm. in changing those habits yeah and those kind of things yeah and it's never too late to do the right thing either like if you didn't do the right thing today well there's tomorrow i'll tell you what foods you should eat though and that is the food from green chef oh this is the best way oh this is this is so good this is so good and so great for um the beginning of the year because everyone's sort of trying out stuff seeing what they want their year to look like and i think you might want to include um green chef in your year because they have all different uh, meal plans for the various diets that people choose, yep. whether it's keto, keto Mediterranean, mm-hmm, or vegan, whatever. And you can alternate too. Like, and that might be fun if someone's trying to decide how they want to eat and you could try these various types and see like which one was oh, the most appealing yeah. to you or tasty. All the recipes are really wonderful. They send you all the ingredients and the recipes to your door. Super easy. Um, and they have options that are like freaking 10 minute lunches and stuff. So that yep. could help you too. You could take them to work. Um, anyway, we love them and they have a deal for you. Let me tell you what it is. Go to greenchef.com slash braincandy60 and use code braincandy60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Go to greenchef.com slash braincandy60 and use code braincandy60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. I mean, I've never tried the keto situation. I wonder if that's appealing. It Have really you ever done worked that? for Eli. Oh, he liked that one. Yeah. Yeah. He keeps saying, I, I'm going to get it back on that. Like he, it really was, you know, some things work for some people's bodies and. Yeah. That's the other thing. Things. It's not one size fits yeah. all. So no, do what works not. for you, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. okay. I prefer a Mediterranean diet and then every you now do. and then so much meat. <laughs> You love meat? Oh, he does. Like, I just or crave you do. meat. You I do? Just cra- I'm like, I need meat. Isn't that funny? Because there's been years when, during our recordings where you didn't crave it at all. In fact, you right. like abstained. So right. like it must depend too on like hormones or something like that. 100%. And like iron, it's got to be something related. Grandma to Meister would say different stages for different ages. So I love that. That's great. Different yeah. stages for different ages. Yes. 
All right, let's kick off the year with a poop story, shall we? Suze, I'm so excited. Yes. This was sent to us by Brainiac. I wish I could remember who, but thank you, whoever you are. Um, this story was about a woman who, I, it's so funny to me that I swear it must be fake, but I think it's real. This is great. She won the lottery, three million bucks. And she said that what she knew right away, what she was, the oh. first thing she was going to do was go to work on Monday and take a dump <gasps> on her boss's <laughs> desk. <laughs> oh my God. I cannot believe this is real. This is, I mean, listen to the quotes from this article. Okay. So she, she hops up on the desk or like, you know, squats over it, well, like yeah. her butt, you know, and classic she, poop. <laughs> she's doing the classic stance and in walks her boss during the shit. No, mid shit. Mid shit. No. Yes. And so let me read you the description. I need to know. Look at every single detail of this story matters. Question. <laughs> was she wearing pants? Was she wearing a skirt? That's an important detail. Oh, it said. 100% it said. Mad. Her pants of were at her ankles. Said, because whoever wrote this cares about this as much as we do. What was, Pants? It said the pants were down by her ankles okay, when the bottom Okay, those are the details in. I need. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me read you the description. It says... <laughs> Well, she should have worn a skirt. She shot her head towards the boss and they locked eyes. And the boss was frozen in shock and fear. In his peripheral vision, he saw a huge, quote, mud monkey sliming out of her butt like a Play-Doh fun factory. That is how he described the actual shit coming out of her (laughs) b-hole. so happy right now I... she's a hero she's a modern day hero he must have been a real asshole <laughs> yeah. well she went on to say it was worth it on friday wow. when i realized i hit the lottery i knew this would be the first thing i would do i hit up every mexican food truck and saved my dumps all weekend I was shuffling around like a death row inmate trying not to explode. I've been putting up with this guy's shit for years. It's time he put up with some of mine. Oh, (laughs) okay. One of the other questions I was going to ask was, I wonder if she changed her diet to... (laughs) And the answer, and that was going to be answered. She was arrested for this crime. (gasps) That's how we know about it. And she said it was worth it. She doesn't care. It's... I love Is how it, you're shocked as if it's not. How, I know, but like what, <laughs> what, what is the crime? Well, what did they book you're her for? You're defecating in, in it, destruction of property. Oh, that is destruction of property for sure. But like. <sighs> and probably indecent. What do they call that? Exposure. <laughs> or, or, um. No, that is that it? Maybe, maybe she got that. It is indecent, exposing. Well, it is. I think that... Oh, my gosh. This is what everyone dreams of doing, you know? They win the lottery yeah. and then they, like, tell their boss to F off or whatever. They're 100% the judge is going to dismiss this case. <laughs> Here's what I... The, what would be great is if the judge made the sentencing, like, like she has to volunteer at a waste management facility. Yeah. Right. If yeah, one gonna, of those or, deals. Or you have to you have to go and empty the dog um uh you know like the things where you put the dog poop yeah. in on the streets. Like I was I'm like somebody's got to do that. And Oh wow, yeah. That seems like a like something if you if you made a little shitty boo boo, you got to got to you you did the crime. You got to do the time or something. <laughs> well, don't you hate those people that win the lottery and they're like a janitor or something, and then they're like, "I'm just going to keep my job." And I'm like, what? I hate those I think people. They're smart. I like those people. Tell me why. They're smart. They're smart. I do think if so. they have a I janitor think... job and they win three million dollars, you think they should well, keep doing not that? A jan- well, who that's are, who I'm who talking is about. This janitor, who is this one person? It's always like those real blue collar, like nice people. But if, of the if, earth. They, if depends on on what 
the job is. Like if it's not yeah, but if it's a real bad one, but you like it, even if it's real, like you know, I don't know. I work as a bagger at a grocery store, and like I don't make a lot of money, but I get a chance to interact with people and talk to them, and I feel like it brings me joy. It's meaning. Like that's maybe it's like their measure of success. Yeah, if it's a meaningful thing, okay. But I think for most people, it's this cult of. American capitalism is believed that like work is virtuous, just independent oh, of anything yeah, else. Yeah, I hate that. Just like you can be hardworking and and not be employed, you know. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a really good point. I just feel like I'm not going to keep working for some yeah, jackass. Yeah, you could spend your day giving to others, like really creating. Yeah, be of service, positive, of course. Yes, and mm-hmm. not make a single dime for it. Yeah. Maybe that's just people who are caught up in a routine and don't want to quit the routine. Yeah, or they just think like that's their value in society and it's like, please, please don't yeah. hinge your value on work, you know? Yeah, really. Because I, I just am getting grossed out by like that American thing. I totally agree with you. But it's anyway. really, and, and I think we've, we've talked, uh, uh, there's a few things we've talked about this, well, I'll say last year, uh, that kind of like highlighted maybe some of the the negatives that I think that what you talked about, like don't say your work is your family. Yeah. Like people are like, oh, we're like a family and how dangerous that could yeah. be. And we, yeah, we've talked a little bit about Even that thing, these kind of things. That phrase, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I feel like those things all sustain this thing where you like mm-hmm. have to work till you die. Right. In order to, like, that's how you get tricked into, like, working weekends. Because it's like, well, I do love my job or, you know, but you need a break, I man. saw something on, and it's probably on TikTok. So <laughs> yeah, it's, I love, like, it's, you, it's a confession. Yeah, I'm like, Susie, it's probably from TikTok. So you are, we know you're not going to like it. And I don't <laughs> like it either. But it said something like, you should have, I don't know, however many. It was like five hobbies. One that, that brings you peace. One that brings you connection. Then there was one that was it said on in the list one that makes you money i was wow. like nice. yeah that's not that's, a hobby that's, that's a job work. like yeah. that's a job like you shouldn't tur- the problem is that we are turning our jobs or our hobbies into jobs because we are forced to because a lot of the jobs that people work at don't take care of them don't give them yeah. the kind of a uh, uh, wage that would make it so that they didn't have to make money off their hobbies wouldn't Mm -hmm. it be nice to just crochet and not put it on that seat yeah right but i i think that's great saying this as somebody who had to have an etsy store to keep her lights on like i get it i'm not judging the people for doing it if you can commodify you know something you enjoy whatever i'm i'm being critical of the system totally that kind of puts people in a position where they have to do that awful yeah so just take a dump on your boss's desk yeah he prob- <laughs> i really want to know what he was like and and i, I mean he yeah. probably what would he say like what what's his defense i want to hear him explain to- himself <sighs> i need to see the transcripts from this court hearing <laughs> yeah right because the judge is going to be like you did could you imagine if you were notes. on the jury what yeah <laughs> that would be so happy i would I'd be, be like happy acquitted not guilty of all charges yeah if you do this shit you must acquit can we can we we make it hit he's the one who can he be in trouble now right block him up yeah yeah (laughs) that's so funny okay let me tell you something that's great even greater than that woman who did that and that is rocket money which i'm totally enamored with do you I signed love up for this it. And I've already I already had them negotiate two bills on my behalf. See? Uh-huh. I am so and excited. I didn't know I've been paying for HBO Max for like 4 months because I just signed up for it one time because I wanted to see Curb Your Enthusiasm episode and I it was super late at night and I didn't want to text you to ask you for your I remember. login. Do yeah, you remember yeah. that? Yeah. So and then I just kept paying for it and I was like, "Wait, I have this? Yeah. It was like an email that I didn't even know. Cause I, I wasn't even looking at. So yes. shout out. Yeah. Shout Rocket out to Money Rocket Money. For saving me money. It's amazing. This app, you know, it's a place where you can really take stock of your 
finances. Yes. And it'll say like, you have an upcoming payment to Netflix or whatever. And you In can four decide. Days, you have yeah. the, like, oh, you can really... It, yeah, it is. This is very good for people. It's empowering, with ADHD. and I've canceled stuff, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm making money!" Because yes. it, it used to be Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, that was their previous name. It's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. And I was worried it would be complicated, and it is not. It is super user friendly. Very easy to identify the subscriptions and see what's coming up and if you really do want to continue using it. Um, and then if you don't want the subscription, you just push cancel and it, they handle it. It's like magic. It is so wonderful. I was like, they said, would you like us to cancel your HBO subscription? I was like, yes, yes I, I do. do. Yeah. Thank you very much. And then in like 24 hours, I got a little text ding. Yeah. You successfully to, to cancel that. So stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash brain candy. That's rocketmoney.com slash brain candy. Rocketmoney.com slash brain candy. You'll love it. Okay. So anyway, that lady's a hero. And I just loved the article and the detail of those quotes. And that's what made I, me think I this mean. is fake. It can't be true. It's so great. And I really do appreciate them asking or like putting in there the answers to the questions that the that hard hitting are, yeah the hard hitting questions um skirter pants maybe i'll just stay on the same sort of topic uh, this seems like i guess technically is old gossip and probably everybody knew but me but maybe you don't know either did you know that adolf hitler had a micro penis and one testicle listen to this what? His penis was so small that How he... How small was it? <laughs> <laughs> it was so small that he had to pee out of the um, base instead of the tip. Like the... What? The pee hole was way up top of the penis because oh. it was so like fucked up. His condition was called hypospid. Spadias, and he wow. had to urinate out of the base of the this shaft seems, rather than the tip. This is kind of like what you said with whole gossip. Like, we know how the story ends. <laughs> uh, looking back, answers a lot of questions. To, yeah. Like, he was maybe, very ashamed. We're, yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of anger. A lot of, like, we're talking like, oh, God. You know? And it, I, I'm so compassionate and understanding for, like, everybody else, but well, yeah, if you happen to be listening and you have a micro penis and or one testicle, I I hope you're good and you aren't sad about it. And I sure But if you're listening and you're a dictator. <laughs> yeah, if you've murdered and you're over six million mass people. Like, yes, then. I'm sorry that I'm going to body shame Hitler. I am doing yeah, that. Yeah, that's fair. We'll okay. allow it. <laughs> yeah, because I could see like somebody writing in like, Susie. Right. This is not about the micropenis. This is clearly about how it affected the execution him. For many, many, many millions of people. Yeah, because obviously it sounds like one of those things people would say, like he's he probably is overcompensating or right. he has this deep right. insecurity, but holy heck, he really did. And he was very yeah. ashamed and he never wanted to be naked in front of people, obviously. And there was like <sighs> I don't know. He had a doctor. That was and you know him. what? That I could see how somebody who felt who somebody would then need to classify people by something that like in different ways. Oh my like gosh. The, Superiority yes. based on something yes. else. Yes. <sighs> wow. I'm sure that had something to do with it. Cause yeah. that's not, that is definitely something that can affect your entire psyche. If you 100%. have something about your, especially your private parts that are either deformed or different in, mm -hmm. in some extreme way like that, that can really affect mm -hmm. you. So I don't think and it how, was good. What are the timeline? When was Freud around? Oh, oh, well, he was way, wasn't he way earlier than that? 
Sigmund Freud, 1856 to 1939. No, that is overlap there. Yeah. So I think also there was a lot of talk of that at that oh, time he had a about problem? an importance in no, just like an uh, uh, oh, the I see. Whole, yeah. Uh, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Like the the impact of yeah, yeah. There was a like. Like Freudian psychology, I guess. Yeah. It, it was very like linked to genitalia. And so that became yeah. a really big topic. Right. That is time. such a good point. Right. Yeah. Because Hitler would have been coming of age when that theory or and, idea became popular. And that was that same area of the world, too. Right. Yeah. It was Austrian. Right. So, boy, bad timing. Bad. Uh, I told you know Lincoln's obsessed with World War Two, and I'm like, hey, Link, yeah. did you know that yeah. Hitler? Had what did he, say? he was like, I did know that. Oh my <laughs> this gosh, we might him. be the last ones to yes. know, Susie. We might be right. There, there are probably books written on this already. <laughs> I actually heard it from the comedian Sam Morrill, who's Jewish, and he said. Somebody told him that, and he was like, yes, we, the Jews are very aware of Hitler's, you know, wow. physical inferiority. Shortcomings. Yes, literally. Yeah. Um, so there you wow. go. Just a little Good trivia for you. I mean, that is something. Not gossip fact. Yes. Um, all right. How about... Well... What the heck do you think happened? Well, I guess we know, but can you believe that aquarium that exploded? Oh, <gasps> Susie, can you believe, I'm sorry, that not a single fish survived? Wait, yes, I can believe that. Why? You mean to tell me, <laughs> the, I'm sorry, I'm a hotel guest, I'm, or I'm somebody just walking down the street. Yeah. And Nemo and all of his buddies all of a sudden splash up around my ankles that I'm not going to pick up one of them and try to find, I mean, do, fish have lived in, in toilet bowls for weeks, right? Oh, okay. Maybe. We couldn't have thrown all fish, saved all fish. Maybe they not were pretty. Not a single. I think they were probably pretty big. Oh. Like, because it was a humongous tank. It was, let me... See. The world's biggest. Oh, I didn't know it? that. I think it was. Jesus. See, don't don't try to outdo everybody. It's not the trouble. Don't. This bad, bad, bad idea. 264,000 gallons. And there were 1,500 fish inside. Um, can you imagine if you were in the lobby when that happened and there's like sharks floating by and stuff? No. No, <laughs> would I would never know? be able to go into an aquarium again. Yeah, because this seems like an AWH all along. Which, <laughs> by the way, yeah, right. Can we talk about how one of our listeners out there got a license plate? I think she's in Colorado too. Yeah, she is. And yeah, has a got G. a license plate. And the first three letters are AWH. Yeah. We love this. And she was like freaked out. Like, I really hope. This isn't a prediction accident waiting this, to happen. It's really funny. Like Colorado, they always do. They have three letters yeah. and then some like three, sometimes it's three numbers, sometimes three, whatever. But the other day we were driving and I saw uh, one that said cry and then three numbers. And I told Eli, I was like, wouldn't it suck if you got cry two, four, seven. <laughs> and then we started to think of all the other things that would suck if you got blank, whatever it was, two, four, seven. Wait, what's like, two, four, seven? Sad, 24, seven. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So, like, cry 24-7 or sad 24-7 or any of those, like, yeah. three letters would be... I wonder if they just take that number out. I was... I was, I, oh. My mind went to all... Like, do they just remove 247 as a combo? I can't believe you even thought of that, though, because I never would have thought 247 equals 24-7. I... 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 But you... They probably thought of that. Look at license plates and... and, and try to find i don't know what this is like something i do when i'm bored dry, on mm -hmm. the road is i look at every license plate and i wonder like ooh, how could we make it say something funny out of that i, I am know. genuinely fascinated by people that get vanity plates yeah. um i just want to know like if you have a vanity plate out there can you write to me and explain like what 
caused like inspired you to do that? Cause that seems like a lot of effort <laughs> and I just want to know like what your thought process was. Yeah. I had a vanity <laughs> license plate on my first car, but I did not get it. Oh, okay. It was a car that, that I bought you. Like it was an old car. It was the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Yeah. I know. I'm jealous. I, had. I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the license plate was BG water, like big water. And I played water polo. <laughs> oh, and God. A that was perfect for lady. you. <laughs> Susie, a that was perfect lady. for me. But I was I was a larger gal in, compared to the other girls on my water polo team. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Way. Yeah, you so were never I I XL. lived up to my license plate. So Well, wait, did you like that though? Or did you feel like, great, now people are going to think felt I'm like, big? Oh, great. 100%. Really? Yeah. Because they did. They like, because kids are looking for any way to tease you. And I was like, oh, whatever. Oh, and then no. I have a funny license plate story, a vanity plate story that's, that is one of Sarah's put your foot in the mouth embarrassing stories. What? That we're also fond of. Uh, <laughs> we are. So I used to get, uh, I used to carpool to school with this family. And uh, we were waiting in line to, I think we were waiting for one of the other gals in our carpool to like get in the car. And the car in front of us uh, was another girl on the team. And they had their last name. Her mom was picking her up and they had their last name on their license plate. And I was like, oh my gosh, look at these guys. What kind of, what kind of dummies put their last name on their license plate? What are you like going to lose your car? Mom turns around from the front seat and goes, Sarah, we have our name on our license no. plate. Two? Two, yes, hand to God, true story. Sarah. I was like, what is wrong with you, Sarah? What? And I, I remember that to this day, I can remember exactly where I was in yeah, the parking that's lot. that's terrible. Like, it, like I, I, I could see the seats, the texture of the fabric <sighs> on the seats of the car that then I was like rubbing for comfort and support because I was, <laughs> I, all I want is a ride home. Please how did you get out of there? How, like, how did you get out of that pickle? Oh, I was like, uh, 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 uh. I'm sure I said something that, like, not you guys, but, like, them, because... What? Not you guys. I mean, other not names. you. Like, yeah, not your name. Your name is fine on there. Just the other people. Do you still so have that stupid. feeling of, like, why would anyone get their name on there? Does that yeah, still bother you? <laughs> because now it feels like identifying information on the car that, like, you're given. Now I got your VIN number and your last name. Yeah, I can right. do that. I mean, I won't. That's but I true. Could, maybe. I don't know. Could you? I betcha. www.darkweb.com. <laughs> yeah, dark web. <laughs> right. Well, if you did get a vanity plate, what would you choose? Well, I was really hoping, fingers crossed, that I would somehow get BCP in mind because, you know, I moved to Colorado. Now that I would God. support. Yeah, I was very, I was really hoping for like BCP 247, BCP 365, <laughs> BCP 143. Like so, any of those I would yeah. be fine with. Yeah. Uh, but now I no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't go for the vanity plates because yeah. I don't have anything like clever enough to say. Like, yeah, right. I, if I, I would. I was thinking about brain candy ones, like what I would do that was like a See, brain now candy I want one. kind of. You right? just talked me that's into the only vanity thing plates. That like I was like, okay, well now I can, like brain candy. I was like trying to spell it out and like get enough letters in my mind of like how I would do that. But that is the one thing I've thought of. Remember brain candy when you lifestyle. bought us those um, the holders? They said yes. brain candy on them. And I was into that, but then somebody like spotted me and then I was like, I don't like it that much when people know it's me. Because what if I'm like being rude on the road? I'm a real aggressive driver, okay? <laughs> You are. This I do know about you. So, and if you, she is not driving, she is also aggressive, and she will lean over and honk your horn. Right. I just feel like that'd be so much pressure. I'd have to be real courteous all the time. Yeah. I yeah. just I can't live up yeah, to that. Th- yeah. This is what I feel like when I I I now think I have to take the patch off my backpack. I have a uh, my camel pack that I wear yeah. when I go hiking. Mm-hmm. That was the one from the challenge, and it has Sarah like embroidered like there's a patch this is sarah yeah now i think i gotta take it off because I'm it's like, awkward if i'm gonna be the one like hunched over puking on the on the side of the trail because i'm like out of <laughs> shape and met, trying to mountain bike which <laughs> yeah. i am not saying did happen but i'm not saying it didn't happen and uh, yeah, i do yeah. not want any identifying information on there they were they could be like wait that backpack looks familiar wait is that sarah from oh god and, and now i'm i'm 
like then they're going to say like he he's taking he a did break, the right see? thing to take the money and run right yeah exactly no because you can't run that. and you can't run from your health either and that's why you got to take some ritual vitamins every damn day amen it is the year for you to create this habit i am enamored with their um the probiotic and prebiotic yes. this is what like we know now. You know, I talk about things like once you know, yep. you can't unknow the information. We have, we know there. We have new awareness about your gut health. Yeah, the microbiome. Creating, yes. Yeah, and we need those pre and probiotics. Well, and you guys know I have issues, little tummy troubles. Like Sarah, <laughs> don't you always say like you're literally a tight ass? Like yes, I do say that. You know, and I got to be really intentional about keeping things going. Okay. And so I'm real big into the probiotic prebiotic situation. And I'm so excited that they have that. And I added it to my routine along with the multivitamin. And then they also have the delicious, uh, shakes, the protein shakes that you can get to help you in like lean muscle and support muscle recovery and all that stuff. So this is how I convince Eli to have pancakes in the morning because I say, Hey, can we have pancakes? And I make them protein pancakes. And yeah. Like, yeah. Those are super healthy and great and wonderful. Well, and they're vanilla. And I get pancakes. That yes. Sounds they're yummy. so delicious. That's my secret. Use it in making some pancakes. Once you try essential protein, you won't want you won't want to go a day without it. Lucky for you, Ritual is offering our listeners ten percent off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash brain candy to start ritual or add essential for women eighteen and older to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash brain candy. I've been keeping that ritual up for freaking five years I know, now. Me I think. too. Mm-hmm. It's great. I was thinking that. I'm like, man, that has been something I've been doing for a long time. I love a routine, you know. Yeah. So good. All right. Um, you know what? I'll just add this. When I was going on road rolls, because you were saying about having your name on, and you know, all the stuff from the shows, they embroider our names on everything, right. which basically makes it unusable in your real right. life. Um, for people like me, and well, <laughs> right, right, like those booty shorts with like your name on the buns. Well, I like was people. just gonna say yeah. that. I'm like, I made the mistake of wearing those to one yoga right. class. Never again. No. Well, when I was 18 and I went on the show, and I really was green and naive. Like I had never been anywhere or done anything, and they don't tell you anything. So like you get on this flight, I show up, our first stop was Hawaii and nobody's at the airport and I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And so I, I somehow made it to the hotel. I don't know how that happened. And then, um, these guys approach me at the front desk and they're like, Susie. And I think that they're freaking producers or something. And I'm like, Oh, thank God. Finally. I was like, there you are. They were not. They just read my name on my backpack. No. Yes. That is so dangerous. <laughs> you could have been kidnapped. Susie, you could have been sold into sex trafficking. <laughs> I dodged a bullet. You really did. But I'm just saying, I support your decision. She was a about virgin. She'd gone for a high, <laughs> high price, man. Right. I was top dollar. So Jeez. thank goodness nobody had, you know, terrible intentions. But anyway, yeah. The embroidered name, no thanks. It's a no, no to that. It's a no for me, dog. Yeah. It's a um, no for me. <laughs> okay. Um, How about? Well, I read this article in the Atlantic about commercials, and it was talking about how, like, you know, in the early days, commercials were very like formulaic and more like that infomercial style, where it's just yeah. like kind of corny and cheesy and over the top. And then like consumers started to figure out the deal and then they were not into it as much. And then they moved into, what did they call it? They said, oh, then they moved into like vibes, you know, like perfume or cars or whatever. Like it would be about like hot people doing cool stuff, you know, and like just vibe. And if you drink this beer, then maybe you'll be super cool too. Yes, And then consumers sort of wised up to that. And so the article was chronicling how lately, and I don't really notice this, but maybe you will, you know, like flow from progressive and yes. like that Geico or what's that guy, Jake from State Farm, yes. those ones. 
Yeah. They were saying that these commercials are like self-referential and sort of break the fourth wall and acknowledge that they're a commercial and we'll talk about like the script and sort of like, yeah, we're selling stuff and how this is the technique now. And they were sort of attributing it to, you know, consumers want that sort of ironic sensibility and irreverence. No, <laughs> it's trust. It's a way to, and look at the things that you listed were all insurance companies. Right. That's like saying, we're like you, you can trust us. We, yeah, I'm leveling with you. Yes. Yeah. It's like just to, it's a different form of building that connection. Yes. Well, but what's weird to me too is that they did now people don't want the oh we're cooler than you kind of th- like we're so cool vibe thing, uh-huh. and now they're going like we're the, we're all the same. Yes. Oh wow! Don't we're not you the same. It's... You're advertising. Yeah. Well, because right, they still want your money. Yes. But like, don't you think it's weird that the article didn't even mention? Because to me, I think that the way that podcasting ads work where it's more conversational and just sort of like we're saying we like this product or service Mm -hmm. and there's sort of like a more authentic i don't know approach don't you think that's influencing television commercials in that way or do you not 100 percent. oh okay 100 percent. yeah i definitely do that because i heard an ad on the radio that sounded like they took a script from our show. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck? Am I listening to a... Po-? And it was like designed to to be... To sound just like them talking. Talk, yeah, and, yeah. But it was definitely a script. And it was it was like, what? You haven't heard about this? And when they're actors who are, are reading oh, it, wow. not a real authentic experience. 100% I would agree with you on that one. Yeah. And I think they're not not recognizing a lot of things, you know, when as somebody who had parents who were in the commercial film like film industry, my mom and dad both watched it change and evolve over time and what they said really influenced it or what everybody in the industry said was music videos. Was that like this fast-paced mm-hmm. music video style with really quick cuts. It changed our attention span. Mm-hmm. Commercials changed. It was like a different, it was like, what are the, what's the popular thing to do? And it yeah. turned into more of like this. And even some commercials tried to make them look like music videos, like Pepsi and with like Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. And Britain. so oh, right. they, they are, they're trying, it, it's the, uh, a lot of that stuff happened at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like music videos in like the late eighties. And well, and that. TikTok, in addition to podcasting, that TikTok style is really effective in convincing people to buy stuff. Have you ever bought anything that you've seen on TikTok? Mm. Cause people do that or they make the recipes or. Oh, t- all the you time. Do that. Stuff like that. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, Eli made a recipe for, Christmas for this like Chia Pino that looked so good. He got it off of TikTok or Instagram or some foodie thing like that. Mm-hmm. And it looked beautiful. No. Flavors weren't there. Shut up. He's like, I had to freestyle and add so much stuff to it because it's like they added it. It was great for clips and for like, it looked really pretty, mm-hmm. but it didn't have the flavor because there's more that goes into it than just what you can do in just a, you know, like. <laughs> 15 second spot. Yeah, right. But I think that that's sort of like, whether it's true or not, the feeling is that this these people are just telling the truth and it's authentic. Yeah. And yeah. I think regular commercials are trying to mimic that. But that yeah. is not what the article said. And we're trying to teach big, huge concepts in, in 15, 30 seconds. And that right. can't be done. And that is, is... Well, do you notice that with like psychology stuff? It's like bite size cliff notes yeah, kind of. I even noticed that with um, like everybody's turning to an audio version. I I was scrolling through. I don't know, it was like I Apple News or something like that, and they had I've never seen this before, but they have audio clips. It's like it, not an actual article that you read. It's an uh, audio article. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't want to listen to something right now. What's happening? I want to. You couldn't read, read the something. text at all. Nope, oh. it wasn't an option. I would have to then click into 
something else and then read the transcript of it. Oh. Yeah. But it was like right. they, they did it in the opposite or usually it's the article that gets turned into a Right. That's uh, what I've seen. Was, it felt like the other way around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These times, they are a change in. Yes, they are. And, you know, you better just But we're not. Expect it. the same thing from us. <laughs> With the exception of this awesome new background. Yeah, come on. Yes. It's freaking great. Okay. Uh, I just have a question, which is, I was reading... Oh. Uh, I think this was the New Yorker, may have been the Atlantic, but it was just talking about personality tests, which I hate. Um, But I just wanted to know your opinion about why I've never heard a man have any interest in personality tests. Eli loves them. (laughs) He does not. He he loves the Engram one. He Uh He doesn't. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard another man besides Eli? I'm going to have to ask Eli. I don't yeah. know a lot of men. Who do I know? I bet you he was introduced to it by a woman because I cannot see like dudes sitting Oh, for sure. Talking about His that. sister. Uh, yeah. Okay. Guaranteed. Wait, what number is he? He hangs out with like all lesbians. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay. Well, like, maybe all that's what. Because... I don't know any men that give a damn about a personality test and would be like, oh, I'm an E, N, P, T, whatever the heck. Oh, my God. This is so him. Yeah. I love it. You are kidding me. Yeah. How do you He's explain this? a whistling this? personality <laughs> test lover. I can't believe we're somehow going to make it work. Okay. Well, let's assume that he, it's mostly women because I think it yes. is. Yes. Fair. You're totally right. Why do you think that would be the case? Because that's, I don't have an answer. I just want to know what you think. Because I hate hmm. it so much. Do you think it has anything to do with like the, the idea that like we need, I, I feel like there is this idea that somehow women are different and need to be, oh, we, like they're so hard to understand. This is <laughs> yeah, not, we're so mysterious. This is not, right. Then yeah. we're like so mysterious. And Usually it's, it's kind of like men who say it maybe who are like, say like, oh, we don't know. We don't know what's going on with you. We don't know, which we don't have a lot. And this is like, not right now. Maybe they're not like a feminist position to take, but like maybe for a long time, there wasn't a lot. It's, it's like, well, uh, um, we're not working. We can't have a credit okay. card. Let's just kind of explore who we like are. Like it makes them like, feel special and, and have self-discovery yeah, it, or yes, something. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Like that. That's <sighs> kind of what I feel like maybe it could be something like that, that there, there's this almost like desire to be complicated too. Yeah. I think that's of like, I'm part. so, I'm so interesting. Like, yes. Like, so, but, we need that because the things that women do find interesting, a lot of society rejects mm-hmm. and had for a long time. Okay. So this is one where it feels like an acceptable way to, I don't know. I, this, this is, I'm just kind of looking at like. The, no, I appreciate that theory. counterpoint because I can't see past how annoying it is and how like, I want to be like, you're not special. Nobody because, is. Because you know what? I think with more agency probably comes less of a desire to do that. Maybe. Okay. Except Eli. <laughs> <laughs> well, why do you think he loves it? Um, like if you had to say what part is interesting to him. Uh, the conversation, he's just like a people person and likes to talk to people about that kind of stuff and likes to know about, and he's really looking for, he's such a, he's like a a good person. Like he's really looking for how to have the, the, the best interactions with people, not just based on what his needs are, but what their needs are as well. And like understanding why people do what they do maybe because of their personality, you know, like I remember him sharing something that was uh, like his sister and I are very similar in our like personality types and we can be the kind that maybe we'll put other people's needs before our own in 
like even with where do you want to go for the, to a restaurant? Oh, I don't care wherever you want to go, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so he says, understanding that, uh, you know, I need to let you speak up a little bit more, or maybe like makes it so I have better relationships with you and my sister or whatever. So like he helps him in relationships, like understanding maybe why people are the way they are or, you know, like why he, he can't get frustrated with, you know, his sister or me for not like saying, deciding which restaurant to go to because he's the personality type that wants to make the plan and wants to decide all the time. So we just say, oh, uh, wherever, because it's easier than debating him on where to go or having him say like, oh, I don't want to go. So when you understand that, that he's like the adventurer type who always wants to try something new and we're the type that like just wants whoever we're with to be happy, mm-hmm. even if it's at our own expense, it it makes interactions a little easier mm-hmm. to kind of understand or like why so you're like, okay, you're doing, you're doing that thing and yeah, kind of puts it out on the table. Okay. You know? Well, I could be wrong. I mean, maybe guys are super into it, but that was my impression. That this I is don't like think a it's a thing. lot of them. I will say that, that he is, he's more of a communicator than most men that I meet mm-hmm. and really like cares about, <laughs> strengthening emotional bonds and like relationship bonds. And so I think you have to care about that because either that or, or be self-interested in a, like narcissistic, just want to know about yourself, but <laughs> hey, it feels like he does it or both, but it feels like he does it to, to want to better his relationships with other people mm-hmm. and I do and how he responds. The, my weird hangups about like stuff that women do is one of the weird contradictions about me. Like I, I say I'm a feminist, but I'm always annoyed by women, like the way they talk, the things that they're into. So I don't know. I think that's, that's fair about. though, because I think that a lot of times the things that we're doing are a response to a patriarchal society. Mm-hmm. That, and what you're seeing is the yuck factor of like, ugh, why do we have to do that? in a response to this, wouldn't it be nice if we could just all, you know, like, like men wouldn't refer to their friend group as like a tribe, like you hate and like everybody. And now we all mm -mm, don't do that. Uh, But there's like this feeling of like, yeah, like when, like, like the the feminine language really bothers me. And I, that is a response to, I think patriarchal mm, and, and like, like a patriarchal It just society. feels false to me though and performative, but I mean, I could be projecting. I don't know. I'll have to look into that in 2023. I'll yeah. examine my own misogynistic biases. Well, I suppose we should wind it down. We covered a lot. Yeah. A lot of poo. I was just going to (laughs) say, if I won the lottery, I would not poo on your desk. And I wouldn't quit this job. Right. Right. But I would quit some other things. Thank you. And also, I wouldn't stop being a therapist either. Okay. But maybe you could do it for like low income people or something. That would be, I would definitely Yeah, you could like shift it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, that would be so fun. Yeah. Care, just well, like, I bet oh, their gross. problems would be more, you could be more sympathetic to them. <laughs> like yeah. if I had all these like rich, privileged people whining about their freaking dent in their Mercedes, I'd be like, well, get the You know what's the it, most interesting? It's just like you said, people are all people. It doesn't true. even matter. That's true. That at the end of the day, our problems are all That's true. the same. We all want love. We all want to be seen. Yes. We all you want our, yes. You're enough. All that jazz. Yes. And you matter. And you, you matter, matter. too. Yes. We all matter. We should all get vanity plates. You know, we should. We're all special. Eli should get a vanity plate with his anagram, like oh my god, or whatever they call that it. That would be so funny. <laughs> I could have tell you said that. <laughs> Poor Eli. Every time he turns around, he's like, "Susie doesn't like whistlers. Susie doesn't like skiing." Oh, sorry, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> I love 
love it. Um. Anyway, you guys. But now every single video. time we talk about powder, he always goes, "Susie would hate this conversation." <laughs> so you so come sad. up to life. <laughs> God, great. such an asshole. Maybe I should work on that. No. But until then, I will continue to body shame Hitler. So that please do in his micro penis. Yeah. That he peed out of the bottom of the top, Ooh. like the freaking top by his t- stomach area. It was like a that like just a, seems a hose with a hole in it. Like, oh my gosh! <laughs> I think he it was like super teeny tiny. Yeah, I I think so too. He needed he some was. therapy. Wow. All right, let's move on. I love you guys. Thank you for checking out our merch on our website, thebraincandypodcast.com. dot yes. com. Check out our Patreon if you want more reality TV content. And um, yeah, let's. Or if have you want to see our fabulous faces <laughs> and watch this video, yeah, you know you want it. IRL. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>